There are some pieces of scientific equipment, like Geiger counters and medical scanners, which track radiation within the human body, you need to be both highly sensitive to radiation and accurate in the measurement of the level of radiation. However, these pieces of equipment also need to be fairly robust, so steel is normally used as part of their construction. But due to the way steel is produced, steel can be slightly radioactive, so this leaves us with a problem. Why is steel radioactive, and how do they get around this problem? Well, the issue with steel's radioactivity dates back to the Cold War, and there was a substantial amount of nuclear bomb tests occurring, which again put fairly substantial amounts of radioactive material like cobalt-60 into the atmosphere. Now, even though cobalt-60 has a half-life just over five years, it's still a detectable amount in our atmosphere, so it's about 30 times less than was present at its peak in 1963. So as part of the process of making steel, you need to blow air through the metal to add oxygen to the iron as part of the process of converting it into steel. In the process of adding air into the steel, tiny particles in the air, like cobalt-60, can also contaminate the steel, making it faintly radioactive. So in order to have steel that isn't slightly radioactive, you need to use air, which has virtually no radioactive particles in it, or use steel, which was created before nuclear weapons were invented, and has been in an area protected from contamination ever since. If there were no further nuclear tests, the radiation levels may eventually drop to where new steel can be used. But currently, because of the radioactivity level in the air is fairly evenly distributed across the planet, any new steel produced will be slightly radioactive. So instead, we rely upon a rather unique event which happened in 1919, after the end of World War I. Now, once Germany had surrendered, what was known as the German High Seas Fleet was interned at the Royal Navy base at Scalp of Lowe in the Orkney Islands, just north of Scotland. Among them were a substantial number of powerful battleships and cruisers. There was an unresolved debate among the Allies as to what to do with all these ships. Eventually, the Germans still operating the ships at anchor feared that ships would be divided up amongst the Allies and that Germany would be far weaker as a result. So, Commander Ludwig von Rotha decided to scuttle the whole fleet to prevent the Allies from taking control of the ships. And though some of the ships were saved from being sunk, 52 of the ships were sunk, representing thousands of tons of steel. There were nine Germans who lost their lives during the scuttling and the aftermath, but no bodies were actually on the sunken ships. So unlike most of the ships at the bottom of the sea, the 52 ships were not sunken graves, just abandoned wrecks at the bottom of the sea. It's these ships which are now the source of what majority of what's known as low background steel, used in guide counters, medical scanners, and other devices where radiation contamination is a major issue.